Okay, so I just made a one gallon batch of lemon clove mead and it's fermenting nicely. We thought that that would be the last mead we made for a little while, but we went to a farmer's market today and we found this really great, just really, really good local honey. And uh, it was for a great price. So we couldn't pass it out. So since we have 12 pounds of honey, we are going to make a five gallon batch of mead. So I thought I'd walk you through just a regular batch of mead. I had uh, the cherry mead that I posted and the honey uh, lemon clover mead. Uh, but this one's just going to be a five gallon batch of mead. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use one step cleaner. And over here we have sodium metabisulfite for sanitizing. We're going to mix the one step cleaner. And then after that, we're going to clean and sanitize everything that we need in order to make this batch. For chemicals, we have wine tannin. We have yeast energizer to help the yeast. We have acid blend. And as you can see, I converted an old uh, bottle of one step cleaner into my acid blend container. Uh, we also have yeast nutrients and bentonite. Bentonite will be for clearing yeast nutrient to help the yeast. And we're going to use K1, I think it's K1, it may be KV1. Actually, let me get the yeast out. Okay, so there's the yeast that we use. It's K1, and for some reason I thought it was KV1, but it's K1 dash V1116. And this, again, is our go-to yeast. We really like it for all of our meads. It's been a very trustworthy yeast. We've never had a stalled fermentation with this yeast, and so this is the one that we really, really like. Okay, so we're gonna clean and sanitize everything, and then after that, we will add the spring water, or actually, we're gonna use our filter and use filter water this time, because of course, like I said earlier, we didn't suspect that we were gonna be making a five gallon batch today, but we're happy about it. And uh, and so we'll I'll, I'll come back once we clean and sanitized everything, and then we'll put the bentonite in. Okay, so we have cleaned and sanitized everything now. And again, we cleaned with the one-step cleaner and sanitized with sodium metabisulfite. If you've never made a mead before, I'm going to take you through this. So first, you're going to need a carboy, and of course, we're doing a five-gallon batch. This is a six gallon carboy and that's perfectly fine, but you would need at least a five gallon carboy if you're gonna make this recipe. You're gonna need the lid, and of course carboys come, come in different shapes and sizes, and so you don't have to have this type of carboy. But if you do, you're gonna need the lid, you're gonna need the bung, which is gonna go on top, and you're gonna need an airlock, which will end up fitting on the carboy. Also, to check for specific gravity, you're going to need a hydrometer and you're going to need a test tube, a turkey baster, I have different measuring cups, all of this has been cleaned and sanitized, um, a big spoon, the wine tannin, yeast energizer, acid blend, yeast nutrient, the yeast, and the bentonite. All of this, if you're in an area where you don't have a home brewer shop close, all of this can be bought on Amazon. Uh, the only thing that you couldn't buy on Amazon is the honey. Try to find a local honey. And the burners are not on. This is just really hot water that I got from the sink. And it's, it's sitting in this. It'll sit in there to thin the honey. Uh, that way, whenever we pour it, hopefully most of it comes out the first time and we don't have to shake the bottle up with water a lot of times so we just want to get the honey out the first time all right so you will need honey this is one gallon uh, which is equal to 12 pounds and for five gallons that's going to make a dry mead and we make all of our meads dry so that we can adjust them after they're done fermenting so if we want to back sweeten if we want to add more honey to make it sweeter after we finish the mead um, then it's a lot easier to control. And so we always make dry meads and then we adjust at the end. Um, I'll have another video whenever this, this mead finishes. 
But if you are watching this video and it's the first time that you're making mead, you will need all these for just a basic mead. And of course, this isn't a mellow mellow. We're not adding anything else. We're just making a honey wine. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and put the bentonite in. Uh, and bentonite helps with clearing. And as you can see, it's four teaspoons in... Um, use four teaspoons in warm water and that's going to be sufficient for five gallons. We are not going to use the warm or hot water technique. We're actually going to stir this up. That's why we need the big spoon. We're going to stir up the water in the carboy and then we're going to sprinkle in the bentonite and then mix it in well. We just had um, better outcomes that way than trying to heat up the bentonite. Okay, so we'll show you that next. Okay, so for the bentonite, and let me show it to you again. For the bentonite, we need to add four teaspoons to a five gallon batch. So for every three teaspoons, it's one tablespoon. So in this one, we have a tablespoon of bentonite, and in that, that is a teaspoon. So we have the right amount. What we're going to do now is we are going to take our spoon. And this is one gallon of filtered water. Normally we use spring water, but we didn't really think we were going to go to the farmer's market and get um, a really good local honey. But after tasting that honey, it was just so good, we wanted to go ahead and make it. So we're gonna use filtered water, which is perfectly fine. You can do that. All right, so now I'm going to pour in the bentonite. As you can see, it is mixing, but we will have to mix it even more. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now, get this going. And we have a big clump in the middle, and so we definitely want to get that broken up. And mixed up really well. And if this is your first mead and you don't know what bentonite is, it is volcanic clay and it is used for clearing the mead. And so it will make sure that whenever your mead finishes, or even a wine, if you get a wine, Kit, there's always bentonite in it, so it makes it makes 100% sure that you have good clarity on your wine, or in this case, on your mead. All right, so I'm gonna keep mixing this up until all of it is thoroughly mixed, and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so we cleaned and sanitized our funnel. Um, you don't have to have the funnel. However, um, I don't want to take any chances. I'm going to miss the top of the container. And so this just sort of takes some of the guesswork out of it. This is a, a funnel that's made specifically for uh, brewing or for making me. Okay, so over here we have the honey outside of the water now. And I can feel the outside of the bottle is warm. And so we are about to pour it in. And it does look like it's really thinned. And what you're going to see towards the bottom is the honey is definitely going to separate from the bentonite. And we added another gallon of water. So whenever we put the bentonite in, we added one gallon, we started up really good. Uh, because of the way the carboy is in the middle, there's a little area that comes up at, in the middle and the bentonite kind of got stuck there, but we stirred it really, really, really good and, uh, and got all the bentonite mixed up really well. And then we added another gallon of water. 
And so once this is in, it'll be a gallon of honey. So we'll be up to three gallons. And this is a really great honey. When we tasted of it, it was just so good that we had to make a meat out of it. We also bought a smaller jar with honeycomb. I'll show that to you in a second. Um, to eat, it was just so good. But let me show you again. This is a local honey and it's made or harvested from Montgomery from the Reed family honey farm. And it is awesome. Really, really good honey. So this is the one that we bought for eating and it's a an incredible honeycomb with honey. What do you think? It was awesome. Yeah, my wife really liked it. We both liked it a lot. So it's really, really high quality honey. And so we are excited to see how it comes out. So if you look down here, you can really see that the bentonite and the honey has separated from each other. And so obviously we're gonna to have to give it a good stir. Uh, you can see right here where the the line is. This is the five gallon mark. And so we're gonna bring it up to about right here with water. I'm gonna stir this first, but here in a little bit, I'm gonna bring it up to about right here with water. We're gonna add all our, of, of our other ingredients. Then we'll add the final gallon of water. Actually, I'm gonna to have to put some water in this. Something my wife came up with is putting water in this, warmer water, not hot water, but just lukewarm water, and then shaking this up really good to make sure we get all the honey out because you can see right there, some's accumulating. And so we're gonna pour a little more in and then we're gonna mix. Okay, so we have the water in there now and as you can see, there was quite a bit of honey still in there and so we're gonna shake this up. Yeah, really good. And as you can see, the bottle now has almost no yellow color. And so we are going to pour the rest of that in because we want to get as much honey as we possibly can. Okay, and as you can see, there's just, there's no more accumulating in the bottom. So we got most of it. Again, that is a great honey. Okay, so we've added just a little more water. You can see where we are from the five gallon mark. And the honey is still resting on bottom. So we want to take our spoon and give it a good stir. And again, you can get all this equipment off of Amazon, but if you have a local brew store close to you, you know, try to support your local brew stores. And of course, you know, local farmers markets, it's really good for the community, um, but if you don't, of course, you can get all of this equipment and um, even honey. Of course, you can you can get honey in several different places, you know, local supermarket. But again, if you can go to a local brew shop and if you can get your honey from a local beekeeper, you know it's really good just to support your community if you can. Okay, so now we are gonna stir. My wife is laughing at me because a little bit ago I said bee farmer instead of beekeeper. <laughs> yeah, so we're trying to stir all this up really good. I want this really mixed together. So that looks pretty good for now. I'm going to uh, I'm going to stir it a couple of times. 
in addition to this after we add the chemicals and so this won't be the last time I stir it but for now it looks a lot better there's no more separation between the bentonite and the honey and so that looks good for now we will start a few more times uh, when we add the other chemicals but for right now this is this is great okay so now we are going to add the wine tannin and here it is and for five gallons we need to add one tablespoon, or excuse me, one teaspoon, not tablespoon, one teaspoon and a quarter. And so we're going to put this right down the middle. We're going to try to make sure it does not touch the sides. Okay, so it's in. All right, so next we are grabbing the spoon really quick. We're gonna give that a stir. Okay, so that looks good. Now we are going to add the acid blend. Okay, so now we're going to add the acid blend. And what the acid blend does is it lowers the pH, which increases the acidity. And there's almost no acid um, in the honey water mixture right now. And so this brings it, the acid blend, blend brings it to a lower pH. And so it gives it a little bit of a better flavor and it's, it's better on the palate. Um, if you're making mead for the first time and you're watching this video, you don't have to use wine tannin and you do not have to use acid blend. Those are optional. Uh, but everything else you really should use. All right, so we're about to add the acid blend. I'm gonna be really careful not to spill any. Okay, so now that it's in, we are going to give that a really good stir. And again, it was one and a quarter teaspoon for the wine tannin and five teaspoons of the acid blend. And those are optional. So if you're making a mead for the first time and you're watching this video, um, you do need the bentonite for clarification at the end. You want there to be a lot of clarity to your mead. You want it to be really clear. So you should use the bentonite. Um, but wine tannin and acid blend, and those are a matter of taste. Uh, we found that the meads that we've used wine tannin and acid blend on did taste better especially um, on the back end whenever you're drinking it it was just a lot better and sometimes this wine tannin I don't know if you can see that but sometimes wine tannin doesn't want to, to break up immediately it's not a huge huge deal because it does break up during the fermentation process because there's a lot of movement um, in the mead when it's fermenting but that last bit of wine tannin it's not going to go quietly, it doesn't look like. I'm going to have to give it several more stirs to break it up. Okay, so now it's just a matter of stirring, stirring, stirring. And um, as you can see, we're still pretty far below the five gallon mark. So I am going to add some more water at this point. Next, we're going to add yeast nutrient and yeast energizer. And then after that, we will take a gravity reading to see where our meat is as far as how much sugar it has in it and what it's going to finish um, alcohol by volume. And then uh, we will pitch the yeast. 
Okay, so we have brought the water to right under the five gallon mark. And what we're going to do now is we are going to add the yeast nutrient and the yeast energizer. So it's two and a half teaspoons of yeast energizer. And as you can see, I'm using a tablespoon here. We measured it out. It, that's two and a half teaspoons. And then it is five teaspoons of the yeast nutrient. So for every three teaspoons, it makes a tablespoon. So we have a tablespoon here. So that's three of the teaspoons. Here's another teaspoon. So after we add all this into the water to let it dissolve, we'll need to add one more teaspoon of the yeast nutrient. And what this is going to do is it's going to help the yeast to flourish and to have a great fermentation. If you do not add the yeast nutrient and the yeast energizer, occasionally you will have a stalled fermentation, which you absolutely do not want. Okay, so I'm gonna get one more teaspoon of the yeast nutrient. And now we have the proper amount, so I'm gonna stir this up and let it dissolve. And I don't add the yeast nutrient in the yeast energizer directly to the mead because it, it does need to be dissolved. It's really important that this isn't just sitting on bottom of the carboy because then it's definitely not going to do its job. So we want to stir this up and get it to all dissolve before we add it. Again, this is like you know, vitamins and steroids for your yeast, which will help it to flourish in the honey and the water. Must. I've never had a stalled fermentation because I've always used yeast nutrient, yeast energizer, and of course, this really great yeast, the uh, K1V1116. It's a really, really, really good yeast. Okay, so this is almost stirred up. So, to give you an idea of how good this yeast and the yeast energizer is, I'll show you the honey lemon clove mead that we made last night and show you how great it's fermenting after 24 hours. So as you can see, this is the lemon clove mead and after 24 hours, it's, it's fermenting perfectly. It's a great bubble. So as long as you add the yeast energizer, the yeast nutrient, and you have a really good yeast, the chances of you having a stalled fermentation are minimal. Or minimal. All right, so I'm gonna add this now and try not to spill any. Yeah, I have to hand a little bit at the bottom. As you can see, just a little bit. And so I'm gonna add some water. And this cup, measuring cup, has been cleaned and sanitized. And so I just wanna get all the yeast energizer and yeast nutrient that I possibly can. Okay. So now we're going to give this another stir and we're almost at the five gallon mark. Alright, so I am stirring it like crazy. This is probably the last stir I'm going to give it before we pitch the yeast. Just want to make sure you really get it going, get everything mixed in really well. Still have some wine tannin there on the top. It hasn't quite broken down yet, but that again, that's perfectly fine. 
All right. So we're going to bring it up to, of course, while it's stirring, it looks like it's right at five gallons, but we're going to pour in just a little bit more water. We're going to let this settle, of course. Um, put in just a little more water. Then we're going to take a specific gravity, and then after that, we're going to pitch these. All right, so now we're going to take a specific gravity reading. This is the hydrometer. We go ahead and put it in our test tube, which has been cleaned and sanitized. They see a little bit of white. That's normal. The metabisulfite, whenever it dries, sometimes it leaves a little bit of a white residue, but that's perfectly clean. So we put the hydrometer in there first so that we know exactly how much liquid we're going to need. Because if you fill up the test tube like right here and then put the hydrometer in, it's going to overflow. Or, you know, you may not know how much you need in here in order for you to get a specific gravity reading. So just go ahead and put your hydrometer in there. Also decompress the baster before you put it in. Alright. Normally it takes about two. And you can already see that hydrometer is floating. So that means the specific, specific gravity is going to be fairly high, which of course it should be. All right, so what we're looking for is to see where the specific gravity is, and that's going to give us an idea of alcohol by volume. Okay, and we're right on, uh, if you can see that. Yeah, we are right on 1090. And so that's really good. So it's going to be about 14 to 15% alcohol by volume. So really good. Okay, so now we are going to pour the yeast in. And some mead makers like to hydrate their yeast first. And that's okay. That just means you add it to a little bit of water beforehand. But we've never had a problem just pouring directly in. And that was a whole pack, again, of the K1V1116 yeast. That is a really good yeast. All right, so now all we have to do is put the lid and the bung will go on top of the lid. We'll put some water and there's lines right here. It tells you exactly how much water to put in. And that keeps anything that could possibly enter the mead out, you know, wild yeast, just, just anything. And so we're going to put the, the cap, the bung, and the airlock on the top. And then that will be it. Okay, so the cap, bung, and airlock are now on it, and it will definitely be pushing this side to this side, and it'll start bubbling like the other one was, the, the lemon, clove, and honey airlock that I showed you. Usually, it only takes a couple of hours, but occasionally it'll take up to 24 hours. But that's it. If you want to make a meat, it's that easy. Okay, something else that I wanted to show you is that we cover the carboy with a shirt and that is just to keep all of the light out. It's only been 15 minutes and we're about to get our first bubble in just a little bit. I don't know if you saw, but it was the water was right up here just 15 minutes ago and it's there now. And so it's already starting the process Yeast is really, really healthy. And we keep all of our yeast in the refrigerator. And so we 
keeps your yeast healthy. And so we should get a bubble in about another 30 minutes, maybe less. And as soon as that happens, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so as you can see, it is still pushing. So the yeast are already starting to really eat. And they are producing CO2. It has now, let me tell you. So we started this, it was exactly 18 minutes ago. Whenever we put on the, well, there's our first bubble. So it was 18 minutes. Actually, I didn't expect it to push that fast there at the end because, oh, look, we're about to, get, about to get another bubble already. Yeah, so that is a really, really good sign. That means that the yeast are already doing their work. And it, it's under 20 minutes. I checked the clock again. It was at 18 minutes at the first bubble. And so that's... That's really, really good. All right, so we will update you whenever this mead finishes. It is not that hard at all.